What's going on, guys? Sorry, I had a little couple issues with my, my camera here going on. But Gettleman's gone, man. Gettleman's gone. He's the first domino to fall. And Giants always do this. They always fire a GM or they fire a coach, keep the GM. It's never in sync. We can't get rid of a, a coach and the GM at the same time. This is why we're always a step behind everybody. This is why we're continuously out coached on the field. Every year, we're just it's just a pattern. Next year will be Joe Judge because everybody knows he's on the hot seat. The hot seat. He's gone next year. We lose two games in a row. He's probably gonna be gone right off the bat. Boom. And we have a, a new GM with some head coach, maybe Patrick Graham, maybe if he doesn't take a uh, coaching job this year. And this is why we're always behind, man. We never do we never think ahead. We never get situated, we're never in sync. The timeline's always messed up. But I wanted to make this video about Gettleman, and um, I'm glad he's gone. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy he is gone. Uh, you look, he never, it, it, Mr. Hogmolly himself never fixed the offensive line. He never fixed the defensive line. I would argue the offensive line got, got worse with him here. You look at Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas is a good left tackle. He's, he's really good young left tackle. But other than him, we don't have anybody. I mean, there's nobody else. There's literally nobody else. You're going to need four starters going in this team. Going in the next year, four starters. You're going to need a guard. You're going to need a center. You're going to need another guard. You're going to need a right tackle. There's there's just so many holes. And when he when he inherited the team, he had he had Justin Pugh. He had uh, Eric Flowers. He had I mean these are these are players that didn't work out here, but they worked out uh they worked out on their other teams. You look at Eric Flowers. Eric Flowers is playing like one of the best guards in football. And you look at uh, Justin Pugh on the Cardinals, and they they've been getting it done with him. And we can't, we can't, we can't get it done with any of those players. And uh, it's a shame, man. It's a shame that this this dude came in here and he lied to us. Another liar, shocker. Just like Joe Judge, fucking liar. Sorry, um, but yeah, he came in here. He preached. He preached hog mollies. He the hog molly. You gotta run the ball. You gotta and nothing, nothing. We could we couldn't do anything. We couldn't we couldn't block to save our lives. We got the worst offensive line in football. We got the, ru the worst running game in football. We got the worst offense in football. And I mean, you look at his draft picks. I mean, he hit on the he hit on Andrew Thomas with what fourth overall. Me or you could have made that pick. Uh, we needed a tackle going in. There was freaking four of them. He could have he could have got Tristan Wirfs. He could have got the other dude. Um, yeah, I mean Andrew Thomas. There was four. There was four tackles that that hit. And uh, if he really wanted to fix his offensive line, he would have drafted Quentin Nelson. That year, uh, the Jets traded with the Colts. Yeah, he would he would have gotten and, and he drafted Saquon. You you cannot build an offensive line, a running game. You you draft the running back before you have the offensive line. You can't do that, Gettleman. You know that. I mean, that's football one on one. You cannot do that. And uh, you know, good riddance. I hope Joe Judge is behind them. I doubt it. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to jump on here real quick and say good riddance to Gettleman. And uh, that's it, man. I mean. <sighs> the dude, the dude has put us in in cap cap hell. We're we're in the salary cap hell. We can't do anything. Can't sign the players. I'm pretty sure we couldn't even add 53 men to our roster this year and uh, uh, this last game because we didn't even have enough salary cap. So you look at the free agency brought in, and he's just missed. He's missed so many free agents. He was okay in the draft. His, his first first round picks, which are kind of hard to mess up because we were always Top ten, top five. So it's kind of hard to mess up. I feel like you can you can hit on almost any of those guys. But man, them free agents, those Ogle trees, those Nate Soldiers, those Kenny Galladay's, who I was excited for. Ah, oh, those Logan Ryan's, those contracts that are just killers. The Leonard Williams contract. I mean, they just they just dismantle us. We can't do anything. We're just stuck. We're stuck with all those contracts, all that trash. I wish that once Gettleman leaves, all the crap that he inherited, all the not not inherited, all the crap that he's done to this organization would just go with him. But it, it doesn't. It's just it's just him. He's, everything else is behind. Still here. Everything's still here. That Leo contract still here. That Logan Ryan contract still here. That Kenny Galladay contract still here. It's just oh my gosh, dude. I mean, if, if Nate Soldier wasn't enough to set this organization back, these these contracts that are we, – we don't have money for anything. I mean, we'd be lucky if we, if we can sign a stopgap guard 
this this off season, seriously. And that's that's about it. That's about all we're getting. And uh, everybody talks about you know second string quarterback because Daniel Sh- Jones can't stay healthy. And I get it. I want a strong second string quarterback, but <laughs> look at the salary cap, man. You ain't getting anybody like that could be a starter because they ain't coming here, man. They ain't coming here for a veteran minimum minimum contract like like Glennon did or or Colt McCoy. You're not getting those guys, man. And uh, yeah, I mean, by them keeping Judge, pretty much tells me that. They're gonna they're gonna wrap it in for 2022, and they're okay with losing. And I just don't understand why you would why you would mess up the timeline and not have your GM and your coach on sync. Because this is what always happens, man. You look at when when Pat Sherman was here. Pat Sherman deserved another year. Ben McAdoo deserved another year. Ben McAdoo went toe to toe with John Mara, and he ended up getting the axe. And I get it. He benched Eli. Eli was done. Eli was done at that point. I love Eli, man. Eli's my dude. I want to name my I don't know if I'm going to name my kid Eli, but I'm close to doing it, man. Eli was my boy. And, uh, yeah, man, he was done. Ben McAdoo knew that the end was near. He wanted to prepare, and John Mayer wanted Eli to another run for Eli. And it just wasn't happening. It wasn't in the books. I don't want Jan, John Mayer's freaking family running this organization. I just want football guy. Give me a football guy. Give me a football offensive coordinator. Give me a football coach. Give me a football GM that understands the basic salary cats, basic analytics, basic stuff, man. It's just it's it's frustrating, man. It's it, it's fighting the nepotism here. It's fighting the the family, fighting the friends, and it's you know it's ridiculous. And once again, the Giants are on two different timelines between their coach and their GM. And I hope. To God, whatever GM we bring in here just wipes wipes the plate clean, wipes it gone. Get rid of get rid of Judge Judge. I hope they John Mara says that he's gonna base his GM candidates not on Joe Judge. So if they come in and they want Joe Judge gone, he says he's willing to accept that. That's one that's one thing. Take it as a grain of salt. I don't know if I believe that, but he says that's true. So hopefully this GM search is not centered around Joe Judge. That we had to get a GM that automatically has to take Joe Judge as his coach, and hopefully get a GM here that just says, "No, nope, I don't want him. He's gone. That's it." John Mayer accepted because that's what he's gonna have to do. John Mayer's gonna have to put his hands up, and you run the organization, man. You run it. I'm just gonna step back, and that's the only way we're gonna get ahead, man. Like I said, I'm done repping the New York Giants crap. I'm done repping the hoodies. I'm done repping the beanies. I'm done repping the jerseys until they prove to me that they can put a a winning organization on this field, and you know, to be out there, and it was it was freezing rain yesterday. And to go to that game in in the freezing rain, and to sit out there in that for seven to twenty two, and Washington can't score either. Washington's not a good offense, but if that was a good offense, dude, we'd have been down fifty to fifty to seven. So you know, it was a complete blowout. It wasn't even competitive. I didn't even watch it. First Giants game I've watched in a long time, and uh, yeah, man. That's all I got. Peace.